In 2157, humanity has developed the great theory of education and gotten rid of wars, hunger, and terrorism. Earth's nature has healed, medicine has advanced enough to save people from any disease, and space traveling has become the norm. Max is traveling around the universe in his own spaceship while avoiding the calls from his family because they want him to go back to college. Suddenly an asteroid hits the ship and damages it severely, causing Max to plan an emergency landing. Unfortunately the ship has become impossible to steer and crashes on the nearest planet. Max manages to get out right before it explodes, meaning he's now stuck on this strange land. He starts exploring the area and discovers signs of a bonfire, then notices a creature hiding nearby. Max tries to communicate with it, but the creature runs away when suddenly a soldier named Zeph finds them and points his gun at Max, saying something he can't understand. Max grabs from his belt a little translation device that he puts into his ear, causing the soldier to shoot at the belt to make Max lose it before arresting him and taking him to the nearest town. Max watches in shock how the town looks like a grim version of Earth, similar to what he's seen in history books. He's sent to a lab where some scientists put a helmet on his head to look into his thoughts as they interrogate him, however they still don't believe he's an alien and it's decided he'll be transferred to a mental hospital in the capital with Soldier Guy as his escort. At that moment, every person in the area starts enthusiastically chanting the country's anthem, promising loyalty to the government. However Zeph collapses as he has a seizure and is taken away by the authorities. On the way to the city, Max notices the awful state of the town and some huge towers every couple of miles. Guy explains that they are protection against enemies. At that moment an explosion destroys the base of a tower and makes it fall on the road, causing the debris to kill a few people while they try to run away and destroy most of the trucks. When a huge metal road pierces Max's truck, Guy gets caught under the rubble, but Max immediately rushes to pull him out with outstanding strength before they could be reached by the incoming flames. Then Max learns that rebels are trying to bring down the government, that's why they need the towers. Now they have no choice but to continue their trip on foot. As soon as they arrive in the capital, the head of the Department of Special Research Strider hears about it and asks his employee Funk to bring Max to his office. Meanwhile Max is being kept in a dangerous facility where they put him inside a water tank to keep on looking into his mind. However the experiments are interrupted by Funk, who uses Strider's badge to take Max away against the scientist's wishes. Meanwhile in the government building, State Prosecutor Umnik also asks his employee to keep an eye on any news related to Max. Then Umnik notices the time and hides in his bathroom to have the seizure in private. At the same time, Funk is taking Max away in his car and finds the road blocked, so he has to find a new route. He's nervous because he's noticing the time, and at that moment, he starts having a seizure. As the authorities come to pick him up, all the locals begin chanting in favor of the government and call Max a degenerate for not chanting along. Taking advantage of the chaos, Max immediately escapes. In the government building, it's revealed that the country is ruled by a dictatorship under the power of the Unknown Fathers, who include Strike and Umnik. When one father makes a mistake, he's immediately killed by the others, showing they're ruthless even with each other. After wandering around the city for a while, Max ends up in a bar and meets the waitress Rada, quickly developing a crush on her. He also sees another customer get too handsy with her, so Max immediately calls him out for it. Furious, the man tries attacking Max with his cane, but Max moves fast and quickly disarms him, hurting his arm to scare him away. The rest of the afternoon, Max and Rada chat a lot. Max teaches her about Earth and space, and Rada is revealed to be Guy's sister. She also invites Max to stay in her home. On their way out, the customer from before blocks their way, eager for revenge. He's even brought back up, but Max is still faster and immediately dodges their sword attacks. Then the men fight him hand to hand, however their punches barely tickle Max and he beats them up in seconds. Then the rest of the gang arrives with bigger weapons, but no matter the number Max can fight them all at the same time. Suddenly a man catches his leg with some rope and then they grab his neck with a whip, yet Max just uses these weapons to drag the enemy around and finish knocking them out. In the end only the cane man is left and he throws a small sphere with blades at Max, who dodges it easily. Later at Rada's place, Guy also comes home and is shocked to see Max, but he remembers how he saved him and allows him to stay. Days start to pass and Max learns a lot about the local culture, like the fact they're playing his thoughts on TV as if it was a movie. The locals are also taught that they live inside the planet, not on its surface, and there are no other planets or stars. History says that the Unknown Father stopped the war against the rebels known as degenerates with the towers and saved the country. Guy is very enthusiastic about wanting to defend his home and invites Max to become a guard as well. Since Max has no ID or documents, Guy has to convince Commander Chachu to allow Max to join. First he has to go through training, so Max learns the chant and joins mission trials, during which he must run through areas on fire and shoot at signs representing degenerates. Max is an excellent shot but his companion isn't, so Max gives him a few tips to pass the test. However later Guy scolds him privately, telling him to never do that again because their superiors demand discipline. When they're at home, Max exercises hard while Guy asks him questions about the rule book to test his memory. Sometimes they also spar. In his free time, Max hangs out with Rada and they eventually kiss. When Max is finally accepted into the army, 
he joins his first raid in rebel lands. The soldiers storm into the buildings with the utmost brutality, using bombs and kicking people along the way. Max is shocked to discover that the so-called rebels are just terrified normal humans and immediately drops his gun. While the others arrest them, a rebel comes out of hiding and opens fire on them, but he's quickly knocked down and Chachu starts kicking him just for fun. Afterward Max watches how dozens of normal humans are brutally arrested and pushed into trucks. Chachu asks him why he dropped his weapon and Max explains the word degenerate had made him think he would see wild beasts, not just poor citizens. Chachu begins insulting the rebels and calls them trash but does admit they feel pain like everyone, however Max explains he doesn't feel pain at all. Later the fathers judge the rebels while flashing very hot and bright lights at them. Some prisoners deny any rebel activity, while others insult the fathers as they point out all the people they've killed. Depending on their attitude, some prisoners are sent to do daily work and others are executed. A rebel shows them the mechanical arm he had to get after the guard's cut is, and the fathers punish him by putting him inside a suit filled with a gas that burns his skin. Max has to watch it all while hiding his disgust. Later he tries to tell Guy how wrong all this is, but Guy argues back and defends his government's ways. With Max being so public, Funk finally finds his location. Later in the evening, Guy and Max are called to Chachu's office, so by the time Funk gets to their place they're already gone. After what happened earlier, Chachu wants Max to prove his loyalty, so he takes him to the forest and asks him to shoot the two rebels with death sentences. Max takes the rebels away pretending he will shoot them, however he lets them go instead. Then he confronts Chachu, announcing he is quitting. Furious, Chachu opens fire on Max, ignoring Guy's pleas for mercy. Afterward Chachu drags Guy back to the capital, leaving Max's dead body in the forest. In the meantime, the fathers are discussing tactics to finally put an end to the rebels' attacks. However Umnik points out this would be a great moment to put together all their guards into a huge army, implying he wants more war. The others like the idea of a full invasion, but they'll have to find a way to make the public accept the idea of war starting again, perhaps by planning a fake assassination attempt. In the evening, the rebels in the forest find Max and are shocked to see he's still alive because his body recovers very fast. Max explains Earth's health technology and points out his people don't know the meaning of fatal wound. He can only be stopped by a shot directly to the head. In return, the rebels explain that the fathers are dictators who took power by force and the towers aren't for defense, they actually send out waves to brainwash people. That's why they always go through a patriotic frenzy at the same time twice a day. Some people are immune to these waves and have seizures instead, but the government's propaganda has marked them as degenerate so they can hunt them down. At that moment the towers send their waves, so the rebels put a stick in their mouths to avoid choking while they have a seizure. In the city, Omnik does the same thing in private. Thanks to his earthling body, Max doesn't suffer pain at all, so he helps the rebels go through it. Afterward, Max and the rebels cut down a fence to cross into tower territory. As the rebels open fire on the soldiers and the alarm is raised, Max runs through the facility without fearing incoming bullets and knocks down any soldier who dares to get in his way with his bare hands. A few rebels are killed and others try to hide behind walls to continue to shoot the enemy to the very end. Max manages to get under the tower and installs a bunch of bombs before running out, tossing a rope through the hooks on each rebel's clothes to drag them out with him regardless if they're alive or not. Thanks to Max's strength, the group manages to escape to the forest right before the tower is brought down by the explosion. Unfortunately another rebel dies from his injuries, leaving Max and one man as the only survivors. Sometime later, Max sneaks back into the city and reunites with Rada, unaware that a neighbor sees him and calls the authorities. When Guy comes home, an argument ensues, and Guy tries to kick Max out. At that moment the authorities arrive, so Max immediately runs out to keep the siblings out of danger and starts beating up the soldiers waiting outside. He's quick and efficient, but unfortunately Chachu takes Rada hostage and Max has no choice but to surrender. Afterward Max is thrown in jail with a bunch of prisoners, including Zef and the guy with the metal arm. Meanwhile Strike visits Omnik, who makes him sit on a chair so narrow that makes guests uncomfortable on purpose as subtle torture. Since Omnik is in charge of the re-education program, Strike wants him to release Max so he can study him, and they discuss a deal. However after Strike leaves, Omnik sees Max's profile and learns he doesn't have seizures. Wanting that power for himself, Omnik orders his employee to kidnap Max and make it look like he mysteriously disappeared, and also to send Strike a message saying Max unfortunately died in action. In the morning, the prisoners are sent to the forest to clean, meaning they must pick up every weapon left by the war. Max's group suddenly sees a bunch of defense robots and immediately drops to the ground as the robots open fire, shooting in circles with no signs of stopping. The prisoners wait for the right moment to fire back, and one by one they bring down the robots until they're all destroyed. Then the group continues to search the area, and Zef teaches Max about the creature he saw when he arrived. He says they're dangerous mutated humans and should be killed on sight or they'll be killed first. After wandering for a while, Zef suddenly falls into a hidden hole, so Max jumps in to help him. They discover a series of underground tunnels and start walking through them until they find an old abandoned facility. After noticing a beast sneaking around in the shadows, they turn on the power and find some old equipment. 
while they get distracted looking into some lenses that show them the desert, the beast uses the chance to run out, and Max tells Zeph not to shoot it. As the duo is horrified to notice human bones on the ground, the beast damages the equipment to cut the power before attacking. The beast manages to get Zeph in a very strong hold, ready to bite him off, however Max is strong enough to fight it with his bare hands. After lots of struggle, he knocks the beast down, saving Zeph just in time. Later while Zeph is sleeping, Max takes off the ropes and lets the beast run away. Zeph scolds him for it, but Max explains these beings aren't animals. The next morning, Max and Zeph reunite with Metal Arm Guy and continue to search the area. Among the trees they find a small red tank stuck in a bunch of vines, and when they try to come closer, they're attacked by a black tank that moves freely. The group runs to hide behind the trees and tries to open fire, but their shots don't do anything to the tanks. Thankfully Max gets an idea, he shoots at the red tank to make it react and when it tries to shoot back, it ends up bringing down the black tank instead. Then Max sneaks under it and appears behind to climb inside, cutting the wires to make it stop. After sharing a meal with the others, Max announces he's escaping. There are security measures at the borders to stop the prisoners from running away, but Max gets inside the tank and drives it to the south as hidden mines explode around him without causing any damage. When Umnik learns Max escaped, he throws a tantrum in his office. Eventually Max finds a few soldiers guarding the road and is disgusted to see executed rebels nearby. He tries to stay hidden inside the tank, but rules dictate every vehicle must be searched. Max smiles when he sees the soldier jumping on the tank as Guy and immediately drags him inside before pressing forward, destroying the gate and ignoring the other soldiers opening fire because they can't damage the tank. As they cross unknown lands, Guy is furious because they may be executed for this and tries to escape, but Max keeps him in the tank and promises him a much better life. 